The Mustang Boss 302 is an interesting one. It's considered the best handling live axle Mustang ever created, which is a weird thing to say out loud by itself. I also consider the Boss 302 the granddaddy of the Shelby GT350, and even nowadays, the new Mach 1. Don't worry Ford, I know that the Mach 1 is way more advanced than the Boss 302, and even some aspects of the GT350. But you can definitely tell there's an homage to the Boss 302 and the new Mach 1. This Boss 302 is owned by my buddy CJ, and he told me, David, I cannot believe you've never driven the 2013 Boss 302, and today is the day. So what made the 2013 Boss 302 so special compared to the normal GT and even the monstrous 2013 GT500? Let's do some comparisons, go for a drive, and see what it's all about. Hello, and welcome to the 2013 Boss 302. All right, I've done a lot of Mustangs, but somehow I never did a Boss 302, so here we are. Woo! All right! Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a 2013 Mustang Boss 302. This is an S197 chassis, which is the same chassis that Smurf is, my 2013 Mustang GT. The thing about the Boss 302 was that it was considered the best handling live axle Mustang pretty much ever made. The thing is about the 1314 GT500 <laughs> is that it was just a monster that went in a straight line. It was kind of a hot mess everywhere else. The brakes and everything would wear out really quickly and then you had no pad left. But when it came to straight line speed, you had 662 horsepower stock. This has the Roadrunner engine. I really enjoy how Ford names their engines because it's very easy to remember. You have the Cyclone engine, which is a 3.7 liter V6. You have the Coyote engine, which is the 5 liter V8. Then you have the Roadrunner, which is the 5 liter Coyote, just kind of beefed up internally. Better valve train, stuff like that. The Roadrunner engine is essentially what was the basis for the Gen 2 Coyote in the S550. So that's why back when the Boss 302 came out and you had people twin turboing them and stuff like that, it made a ton of power and it could hold the power. And that's why the S550 has a lot of this in it. But the Boss 302 considered the best handling S197 live axle. How bad is the live axle? Well, when you're on coilovers, really good suspension, you barely notice it to be honest. Now is it S550 IRS level good? Uh, not quite, but the turn-in is still very nice. You just have to work it a little bit more. This is also an AWE exhaust, which is extremely loud and also catless. to the longevity of this paint, I have noticed that the paint has kind of wore out on this color. My grabber blue color on my car has never faded or anything like that. But this, unfortunately, has had some paint issues. 
Along with that, we also have this massive cow hood up front, which makes it 10 times more menacing. The owner of this car, CJ, you might remember, he had a gravel blue Mustang just like mine. And people used to confuse him for me all the time while I drove Smurf. Then he got rid of that grabber blue Mustang. He got a C7 vet with a blower on it. He liked it, but he just didn't have the same personal connection to that car that he did with his live axle Mustang, which is in turn a quote unquote worse car but he just enjoyed driving these cars so much that he was like you know what if i'm gonna go back to an s197 chassis mustang i'm gonna get what's essentially the best one the boss rear two's interior also is a little bit better than normal we have an alcatara steering wheel the panels are basically this brushed black aluminum on the dashboard it doesn't look like hard plastic even though i'm pretty sure it is hard plastic but at the same time it looks nicer and also the door cards have suede in them it's these little tiny details that the normal GT just did not have. And this car also has upgraded brakes on it. CJ is all about handling. That is his favorite thing. He also has an NB Miata and actually a Mach 1 as well. So his lineup is from an older era. He enjoys these analog cars more. And is the Boss Rio 2 as good as the GT350? My answer is no. But that's not a bad thing, because it's just different. Another thing about the Boss Rio 2 some people hate and some people love is that it has these fake fog light looking things up front. It's an homage to the GT, but instead of having the fog lights, it's just these black circles. And I think they look really nice, but you can see a lot of people are like, I'm paying extra money for the Boss, why don't I have fog lights?
know guys, what do you think about the Boss 302 Mustang? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it was overpriced or overrated? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you liked this video, make sure to check out last video, which I will put right here. And I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. Rah! This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double of premium original detail product for half the price. Head over to PattersonCarCare.com or go to the link in the description below.